Welcome to our presentation on chemical energy and the importance of ATP. All cells need chemical energy to live. Plant cells, animal cells, doesn't matter. They need energy to fuel the chemical reactions of life, which all life is based upon. The chemical energy used for most of the cell processes is carried by ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Molecules in food store chemical energies in their bonds, usually as carbon, usually as sugar bonds, glucose. Starch molecule here is represented, long chain of starch molecules. All of them are made up of many, many little um, sugar molecules. Each of the green things are sugar molecules. We look a little bit closer at the glucose molecule. We see it's a six carbon chain with different um, end pieces, uh, OH, H, and uh, there's a, a methane on the end of its, uh, no, um, an alcohol on the end of its CH2OH. But basically, it's just a bunch of uh, a chain of carbons. And then when you chain them together, you get starch or cellulose, depending on how they're chained together. ATP transfers energy from the breakdown of food molecules, these sugar starch to sugar molecules, to uh, cell functions. Transfers energy from the food to the cell functions. Energy is released when a phosphate group is removed. So you go from adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate. ADP, adenosine diphosphate, is changed into ATP when a phosphate group is added. This happens um, uh, moreover in, uh, um, well, in photosynthesis and in other steps along the way too. So here's this, the, the cycle of um, ADP at the bottom. It's low energy. It's missing a phosphate. Energy from the breakdown of food molecules. Um, part of cell respiration. Um, and a phosphate is added. And now we have a high energy molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. can move out. And when that phosphate's removed, it helps to uh, uh, stimulate or the energies there for the chemical reactions of life. ATP is a little bit like to life, it's a little bit like to what electricity is to machines. And glucose is a little bit like a lump of coal to machines. Coal is very stable, you can throw it against the wall, nothing happens. Um, likewise, glucose is very, very stable, but it doesn't good. You can't plug your toaster into a lump of coal and you can't function, uh, you know. Uh, get the energy for cell functions from glucose. So in cell respiration, energy, glucose is broken down into adenosine triphosphate, ADP, I'm sorry, ATP, which is like the electricity of, of the machines. Organisms break down carbon-based molecules to produce ATP. Carbohydrates are the molecules most commonly broken down to make ATP. It's not stored in large amounts uh, because it breaks down very well. If you have a lot of ATP and it's not doesn't get used fairly quickly, it just kind of breaks down into waste heat. That's all of ATP ends up as waste heat, but it, hopefully it gets used in the chemical reaction first. If it doesn't, it'll just break back down into ADP, giving off heat energy. You can get up to 36 molecules of ATP from one glucose, one sugar molecule. Here's your adenosine triphosphate and diphosphate. Fats store the most energy. Store that is now. 80% of your body energy and about 146 ADP molecules can come from a triglyceride. Proteins are the least likely to be broke down. If you're breaking proteins down to make energy you're in, in a serious uh, uh, starvation kind of mode. That's not a, not a very good uh, way for your body to work. Amino acids are uh, not usually needed for energy. They're needed to make proteins and enzymes to keep the chemical reactions going. So if we're taking these proteins and these amino acids and breaking them down to make ATP, we're now lowering our supply of proteins, or the, the, the building blocks for making the proteins and the enzymes that keep us alive and that have, could have serious consequences. It's about the same amount of energy as a carbohydrate, but it has a much more important use 
as the building blocks of proteins and enzymes. A little chart that shows proteins and carbohydrates that get about uh, 4 calories per milligram. Lipids about 9 calories per, uh, per milligram. That's fat. So fat's a really, really good way to store energy. Carbohydrates is the excellent way of source of energy. And proteins can be used, but they're more likely or more importantly used for the creation of proteins. Very f There's a few types of organisms that do, do not need sunlight, and photosynthesis is not a source of energy. Um, some organisms live in places that never get sunlight, deep, deep down in the oceans. In chemi chemosynthesis, a chemical energy is used to build carbon-based molecules. Many times it's thermal or heat energy from the heat of the earth. There are vents down deep in the ocean where no sunlight ever gets. Very, very hot vents. And the heat from those vents fuels a chemical pool of, of molecules down there, which life is based upon at the bottoms of these deep parts of the ocean. It's similar to photosynthesis. It uses chemical energy, most of the time heat energy, <coughs> instead of light energy. And here's a picture of one of these vents deep down in the ocean that uh, life around it is all based upon.